This video is going to be about how to limit the stroke on your hydraulic ram for hydro assist steering. It's super easy, it's almost free, and hell, if you ain't scared of your wife, you don't even got to leave the house to do it. Stay tuned. The best part is you don't have to find a fancy plastic store or figure out where they sell Delrin. All you gotta do, guys, wait till your girlfriend or your wife is taking a shower, and you come in here and you sneak into the kitchen, and you find that drawer that's got the cutting boards in it. Now, stay away from these little thin, crappy ones like this, because they ain't gonna work. You gotta take her good one, the good thick boy, thick with two C's, like my daughter would say. Damn, boy, he's thick! This thing's made out of ultra high molecular or something plastic or nylon or whatever and it's gonna work. Now for those of you guys that are scared of your wife or your girlfriend, just take your ass to Walmart and buy one. Don't risk it. So this particular cylinder and most of the ones that people use for hydro assist have an inch and a half bore and that is the inside diameter of the bigger part of the cylinder. So what you need is an inch and a half hole saw and your wife's cutting board. <laughs> And after you determine how much limiting you need, basically you're gonna just zip a bunch of these out of there, however many you need. This is an inch and a half, but by the time it cuts it out, it'll be smaller than that because of the kerf of the saw. It's gonna take some of the material away, and that should leave enough room for the fluid to pass by it and come out of that port. If you're worried about it being too close, you can always just run the little discs that you get on on the sander or something, bolt them all together and sand them out. So then after you have them, they're all gonna have the little itty bitty pilot hole in them after you cut them out. And then you just step that up to one inch or whatever size your ram is. Before I even start chopping into old glory here though, we gotta figure out exactly how far I need to limit it. And I'll show you how to do that too. So really all you need to do is jack the front end up off the ground and get yourself some kind of a straight edge that you can set on top of your tie rod like that and find a way to clamp it in place so that you don't move. Pick one side of it to uh, mark off of. So then what you do is go turn the wheels all the way left, come over, mark the tie rod, turn them all the way right, come over, mark the tie rod. Then you measure that distance and that's your max distance. Now what you can do before you do this is make sure your steering stops aren't limiting you. You know, figure out your steering stops first. Because actually once you limit this ram, you really don't even need steering stops that much. So in this case, I should have just bought the six inch ram because I'm at five and seven eighths. So since that was five and seven eighths, my cutting board's five sixteenths thick, I'm gonna end up needing about seven of these puppies. So let's get cutting. If you don't have a belt sander, you can really use anything to sand these down. It just made it a little bit quicker and easier for me. So this is the point you have to decide like how many of these you need. I said my steering was five and seven eighths, which I guess that means since I have an eight inch cylinder that this needs to be two and an eight. This is one sixteenth short of two inches. So I need a seventh one. So I'm grinding this one thinner so that it comes up to just past two and an eighth. So in your case, you just have to do the math, figure out what you need. And then if you need like a extra super thin one or whatever, then you just have to make it separate. So if this video is helping you out, Poke that little thumbs up button, I promise it ain't gonna poke you back. wanted to point out if you don't drill these right 
they get real crooked real easy so I'm trying to come up with the best way to do this so that this don't happen okay so I found a better way to do this and if you look I haven't cut it all the way out yet but it's much more uniform so what I did is I grabbed a one inch hole saw and what I do is I start it and I score it on both sides and then throw the bigger one in and do the same thing and as long as everything looks good go ahead and punch it out and then this one will be real easy to knock the center out later in fact here's one that i've got kind of ready plus by starting it on both sides evenly i end up with this little lip which is real easy to knock off and the first ones i did it was like melting the plastic over the back side so i had to like belt sand all this extra plastic off so by going through a little bit on each side it's making this a lot easier almost can just clean it up with this deburring tool and maybe just give it a quick sand and then it's done if you have a lathe or an end mill or something like that this will take you like no time that looks a whole lot better so there's that it was a little bit of trial and error but it actually was really easy to do i mean I had to redo it because my holes ended up off center but whatever so now it's time to pop that ram open and i'll show you how to get these inside of it so moving on to the ram you gotta take this end cap off which is called the gland and certain ones are different but this one has these two holes in it which take a spanner wrench and like i have this adjustable one but it's not big enough to fit around the ram so i got a little trick for you came up with this on my steering box if you have any of those Harbor Freight grinders that come with these little bitty spanner wrenches, you can take two of them and bolt them together and it turns into an adjustable spanner wrench. So before you just go cranking on this, and again, this is a surplus center ram. If you look on the back, there's this slot. And as you start turning it, you'll see that this pin kind of comes out. So what you have to do is get in there with like a little pick or a little baby screwdriver and kind of lift up on this as it gets there and it'll start coming out of this hole as you turn it and it'll guide it out. And when you install it, it's kind of the same way. You just start it in there and then turn it in. When you're putting this cylinder in this vise, and God, I hope you have a vise for this job, make sure you don't over tighten it too much. You don't want to deform the canister at all and you don't want to squish your rod end or whatever you connect the ram to either. Be really careful not to scratch your ram. So that's what that looks like and installing it's just exactly the opposite way you started it. But there are these little teeth, kind of these little spots in here where this can enter. And so that little passageway up toward the top is where it goes. It's really hard to see on the screen. But I've rebuilt cylinders in the past, but never this style. That was more like industrial stuff for work. Looks like my piston's right here and it's kind of hitting a wall here. So before I go yanking on it, I'm gonna try to see if there's something that's holding me up. I think all it is is that the main O-ring is dropping down into that groove where that snap ring came out of. So I think it just has to get carefully worked out of there. Yep. Just like that. So now all we gotta do is take this nut off, take the piston off, slide all these down on there and they will sit right up against this face. And when the ram comes out, this will basically bring them to there and it'll stop it right there. So the last two inches won't be able to come out. Oh. Yeah, that ain't gonna work. I'll find a way to hold this so that I don't mar up the shaft. mother be sure not to damage this o-ring oh that has gotten really tight i can't get it to move any farther i can't even tell if it has threads or not but it's coming off by twisting it but now it's kind of hit a wall so i'm gonna see if i can get it to spin i'm not gonna grip this very hard and i'm gonna make sure i don't touch the seal damn left a little mar on there anyway yeah, there is an O-ring inside of there, too. 
And that was a little snugger than I thought. I almost feel like I should deburr these a little bit more. I'm pretty sure plastic can't scratch hardened steel. So hey, if you like these kind of videos, wheel on building, breaking, fixing, hit that little subscribe button. It ain't gonna hit you back. When it's time to reinstall the ram, make sure everything's really clean, put a thin coating of oil on it. Just be real easy when you're pushing the seal back through the opening. You are gonna have to give it some pressure and wiggle it up and down a little bit, but if it feels like you're having to force it or that you need to hit it in with something, stop, pull it back out, reevaluate, try again. Because if you put even the tiniest tear into any of these O-rings, you're buying a rebuild kit. And just like that, we're limited down to six inches. This is not that hard. I think this whole thing start to finish took me maybe two or three hours and that's with filming it and having to cut the spacers out twice. So there's really no reason not to do it. Hopefully you only have to spend one night on the couch for stealing your old lady's cutting board. So my Jeep doesn't have the hydro assist yet. So now I can move on to mounting this cylinder. I have my box rebuilt already and all the other stuff done that needs done. So it literally just needs mounted and the lines hooked up. If you didn't see, I just got done doing high steer on this Jeep and a whole bunch of other steering mods and stuff. So check out my channel if you want to see those videos. Like this video if it helped you, and I'll see you next time.